Hey there, White Sox fans. I hope everybody's gotten a good start to their summer. Uh, it's a beautiful day today. Uh, not beautiful in the south side of Chicago right now where the White Sox game was rained out. On the plus side, that gives us more time to make our picks. For the picks to click, who will be the top offensive performer of this coming week? I will say that in the next couple of days, I will do a leaderboard update video, which will cover the last two weeks of White Sox baseball. Then we'll finally be totally caught up. In this video, we're going to take a little look at the last week of White Sox baseball just to see who got the playing time. As for one of your request, I believe it was Sharon Davis, uh, we're going to do a team-wide injury update. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a lot of news. And it seems like every week there's another bad story that we have to address. Of course, we know this involves Jose Abreu this week, but we're going to get into that in just a little bit. And then finally, we're going to end it off with a look at the week ahead. So simply looking back at the last week, uh, just to see who were the full-time players. The, you know, our lineups are changing all the time, especially with injury. The full-time players last week, we had Yohan Moncada, Tim Anderson, Brian Goodwin, who you know we were never expecting him to be a full-time player, but he got full-time reps last week. Uh, yes, Manny Grandal, Lieri Garcia, and Jose Abreu was a full-time player up until, of course, he was hit on the knee with the pitch, missed a game and a half of the doubleheader on Sunday. Including Jose Abreu, who missed a little bit of time, all of these players had between 16 and 21 plate appearances. Now, the halftime, roughly part-time players, that includes Luis Gonzalez, Zach Collins, Yermin Mercedes, Jake Lamb, and Danny Mendick. All of those players got between 7 and 13 plate appearances. And uh, just for interesting perspective, uh, Danny Mendick had seven plate appearances last week, got zero hits. Meanwhile, Lucas Giolito had just two plate appearances and still got one hit, so he outslugged Danny Mendick last week. We all know that Tony La Russa likes to go with the hot hand. The big question this week when you're making your picks, is your mean Mercedes one of these guys that's going to go from a part-time player back into being a full-time player? He, of course, ended off the week with a big four RBI game to salvage the doubleheader split against Seattle. He did have only nine plate appearances overall on the week, though, so one really good game can skew those numbers. One positive about the rainout today is that maybe it gives Jose Abreu one more day to recover and he'll be back in the lineup on Tuesday. Uh, I could see that happening. I don't. We don't really know a lot about the extent of his injury, but it's most likely just a deep bone bruise. That might push him to DH a little bit too. Who's going to pick up that playing time? Good possibility that Yasmani Grandal takes some time at first base, along Zach Collins more time at catcher position, or it means Andrew Vaughn plays more at first base. Anytime I want to question why Jake Lamb is on the team, uh, he then has a good game. Well, that hasn't happened for a while now, so I'm just going to question it. Uh, I do not like to see him taking at-bats away from Andrew Vaughn. One of these guys has a big future with the White Sox and the other does not. And I just don't want to see Jake Lamb possibly taking away some valuable playing time that could be a good development time for Andrew Vaughn. Vaughn has not exactly been tearing the cover off the ball, but you know this is his time to learn and grow. It is rough that so many players are faltering at the same exact time. And uh, hitting is contagious and it works both ways, unfortunately. We're seeing the downside of that right now. On the plus side, if somebody like your mean Mercedes does start to get it going, maybe he lifts everybody else up around him. The fact that he, Yoan, Jose Abreu have all been scuffling, and Tim Anderson has been doing okay, but he's just not been at that all-star level uh, that we want him to be at. Fortunately, Yasmani Grandal has been playing very well lately. Uh, Zach Collins has been getting some big hits. Not hitting for a high average, but just about every hit he's ha had lately has been a double. So at least he's hitting the ball with some authority. And meanwhile, Brian Goodwin has come in to be a very good at least replacement level, probably a little bit above replacement level, especially when you factor in his defense. Uh, I would have to imagine that he will continue to be the regular everyday center fielder. Let's try to see what we can learn from looking at the injury updates. Jose Abreu, as we know, is the most recent injury. Went down with a hit by pitch, hit in the knee. We know that x-rays have come back negative, so so chances are it's just a deep bone bruise. Uh, hopefully he doesn't miss more than a game or two. Thank goodness Michael Kopech is getting close to coming back to the team. He's been out for a month, a full month without Michael Kopech, one of our most dominant bullpen arms. You might remember that weird moment where Michael Kopech fell off the mound in pain as he uh, threw the pitch that got the last out of an inning. He rested for a couple of weeks, tried to warm up, felt more tightness. It kind of pushed his return back a bit. I would say he, it's even likely that he comes back this week because they do not expect him to need to do a minor league rehab assignment. When he's ready to go, he'll just be back up with the team. So hopefully that does happen during the Minnesota series. Another hamstring injury belongs to Adam Engel. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of good news or a lot of news in general when it comes to this injury. Uh, of course, he missed almost the entire season up till now with a quad injury that he suffered at the very end of spring training. He came back and he was awesome. He was robbing home runs and hitting home runs, uh, picking up where he left off in 2020, but 
quickly went down with a hamstring injury. He's seeing specialists right now. We don't have a lot of information. So the only thing we can say is that he's probably not expected back soon. Billy Hamilton, with his right oblique strain, is in a similar predicament where he has been just resting this muscle. Uh, he tried to get back to baseball activity. He felt a pinch. It delayed his recovery. So we don't have a clear timeline on him yet. Hopefully, in the meantime, Luis Gonzalez continues to make the most of his uh, opportunity here at the major league level. He had a pretty good day on Sunday. But yeah, Billy Hamilton, Adam Engel, those are some nice depth pieces that unfortunately we have so many injuries that we need them to be starters and, and we don't even have access to them. Oh, speaking of yet another injured outfielder, Adam Eaton, uh, his expected return was listed as the end of June. Here we are, June 28th, going on the 29th. Will he come back? It is yet another hamstring issue with Eaton. As you all know, uh, we've all been pretty frustrated watching him when he was in the field lately because he's only been batting 195 on the season, and he started out better at the beginning of the year, so he's really tailed off a lot. Due to his age, perhaps, they might just play it ultimately safe and just keep him out till after the All-Star break. That is based on absolutely nothing but me just making a guess out loud. We need his veteran leadership down the final stretch, so maybe we'll just give him several weeks off and he'll be back right after the All-Star break. Finally, we get into the column of good news, and that is Aloy Jimenez. For the first time in a very long time, we hear that Aloy is participating in some baseball activities. He is working out in the Arizona complex. Really positive to hear that he is participating in some baseball activities. Probably, hopefully going super, super light, not trying to make any uh, jumping catches at the wall. So the timeline that we're looking at is perhaps by mid-July, Aloy Jimenez will be assigned to a AAA team to begin a rehab assignment. I would say that would be very exciting for anybody down in Charlotte. If anybody is in that part of the country that might be able to get tickets and watch Aloy in the minor leagues, uh, that would be really fun to go and see. When he first went down with injury, the guess was that maybe he would be available to the White Sox at some point in August, and it looks like we're still on track for that return date. Speaking of rehab assignment, Jace Fry should be available to rejoin the White Sox at any point. If you're a brand new White Sox fan, you might not even know who Jace Fry is, but he has been with the White Sox for a while. He's a reliever. He's a good reliever that's been injured a lot. He had back surgery in the offseason and has not played with the White Sox at all this season. However, he is a regular contributor in the minor leagues now. He's appeared in 12 games, hosting a 208 ERA across 13 innings pitched. And the White Sox have had some scuffling lately uh, out of the bullpen. Looking at the White Sox bullpen, uh, Zach Birdie has gotten just a little bit of time, five appearances, eight innings pitched, but allowed four runs. Ryan Burr, wow, off to a great start. 10 and two thirds innings, scoreless. Matt Foster, as we all know, has off to a kind of a rough start, two and one record, uh, but with a 655 ERA and again part of that is mismanagement. Garrett Crochet as we know has been scuffling lately. He has lost his command. Evan Marshall is somebody that has an ERA that is unbefitting of someone like him. A 506. Uh, Jose Ruiz has been pretty impressive with a 334 ERA across about 30 innings. Hoyer's ERA is way higher than you would expect it to be. Aaron Bummer's ERA is 326 but he at times looks like the most unlucky pitcher out there. I'd say at any point, if one of these players gets sent down to the minor leagues, it'll be Jace Fry that comes up to replace him. You guys all know this, so I'm not going to spend much time on it. Uh, devastatingly, Nick Madrigal had hamstring surgery after his uh, partial tear. Uh, sounds horrendously painful, and he is going to be lost until next season. And finally, there's not a lot of new news on Luis Robert, Luis Robert, however you want to say it. You know who I'm talking about. Number 88, our star future of the White Sox. It is Robert. I already know I'm going to get the comment. It's Robert. Just look up Luis Robert first press conference with the team. He literally says, in the United States, I'm okay with people saying Robert, but back home, they call me Luis Robert. Oh, back home, they call you Luis Robert? Oh, I'm assuming back home, they probably know how to say your name correctly. Uh, he sustained his uh, right hip flexor tear and decided against surgery and went with rehab. Uh, the decision to do one versus the other does not change his timeline, interestingly enough. Usually I feel like, just get the surgery, get it over with, but he is so young, maybe you do want to put off the more invasive procedure and hope his young, very athletic body will be able to take care of things. Uh, when he went down with injury, the timeline was late August uh, for his return, but since there is no new news on that, we will just have to assume that's still the timeline, late August for the return of Luis. Uh, that is not a given though, there is a chance he's lost for the season, but we don't have any news one way or the other. Looking ahead at the coming week, the four-game homestand against the Twins, the final homestand before the All-Star break, uh, of course, is now a three-game homestand as the first game was rained out. It will be made up in July. And then the White Sox head to Detroit. And uh, I, I feel that I'm probably like most of you, that even though the White Sox have won, they played Detroit very well, they have not 
excelled the way we expected them to. So who is your pick going to be for the upcoming AL Central uh, rivalry week? I'm going to go with faith and hope that your mean Mercedes is turning the corner. I'm sure he got a good confidence boost over the weekend and I do think he just has that natural hitter's ability. Maybe he's been in his head a little bit. Also, by all means, he's a rookie. In addition to him getting used to the league, the league has gotten used to how to pitch him. So it's going to go back and forth. I think you're mean. The Yerminator has the ability to get out of this funk, and I think we're already seeing that he's beginning to. Uh, he's hitting the ball more, and if he can start to drive the ball more, I mean, he was hitting home runs like crazy at the beginning of the season. If he can mix that into his game a little bit, we have a team leader on our hands while some of the other team leaders aren't doing so great right now. I wanted to take a quick moment to take a look at the pitching matchups also against the Twins uh, for this series. Tomorrow's game will feature Lucas Giolito going against Kenta Maeda. Uh, of course, Kenta was an unhittable machine last year, and he's just not feeling it this year. Uh, he has improved. He had an ERA over five for a while. He's in the fours now. Lucas Giolito, meanwhile, also has had a somewhat disappointing by his standards uh, season. However, with an ERA in the mid threes, he's always somebody that you're confident with on the mound. On Wednesday, we have Dylan Cease uh, facing Ober, and I'll be honest with you, I don't even know who that Minnesota player is. That's my lack of uh, knowledge on this one. Uh, Dylan Cease has insane home road splits. He has been lights out at home and very hittable on the road. And finally, the matchup to pay attention to on Thursday, July 1st, we have Jose Barrios versus Carlos Rodon. That is the pitching duel. Barrios is one of these guys that I just I wish was on the White Sox for so long. He can be so dominant and he's really coming into his own. He was dominant but inconsistent in the past. He just looks really, really good this year. And of course, Carlos Rodon has exceeded everyone's expectations. Uh, coming into that set with a 6-3 and three record and a 2 206 ERA. That'll be a fun one to watch. So let's hope the White Sox finally put some consistency together and take on these AL Central rivals. I'll be back with a video later this week to fully update our leaderboards. I uh, hope everyone's having a great summer. Play ball. Go Sox.